You're listening to the To Be The Church podcast, where we explore what it looks like to truly be the church in today's culture. I'm Tyler. I'm here with Andrew. I'm here with Ben. How are you guys doing? Good, man. Feeling, feeling great. Feeling all right today? Yep. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about a, a Gospel Coalition article that came out recently about what you should expect out of your pastors. And I promise this is not just like, hey, please stop expecting stuff out of us, people. Um, but no, we're going to talk about <laughs> Seriously. this. Uh, but before we do, we're, we're four weeks into this new video podcast idea. So if you're listening in your podcast app, you, you may know that you can watch us on YouTube. YouTube.com forward slash to be the church is where you can do that week in and week out. And this podcast used to just be the, the, the trio here, the three of us. Yeah. Um, you know, sitting around. A lot of times it's just me and you, Andrew, even uh, back back in the day, but it was just, just the three of us. And now there are seven of us in this room every week. We have uh, Brendan's here, Cody's on camera, and we have Brian and Max over on the, uh, on the, at the production table. And so I, I want to take it to, to Brian and Max uh, for, for a minute or two. Um, have you ever listened to this podcast and thought, oh, I wish I could speak into that right now? Be honest. Well, not both at once. Well, I've, I've, I've done it a couple times because, uh, here, let's adjust that a little bit. There Edit. we go. Uh, I've done it a couple times uh, where I've written into the podcast, um, and so you've answered. In fact, I, uh, I I know for a fact that I've made Andrew groan a couple of times, and um, <laughs> Tyler, I insulted you like crazy. So you know, Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I'm here for that. You know, when, when I was asking for uh, Ben's answer to something, but. Oh, yeah. that was you? Come on. You're the hidden Ben <laughs> asker? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. I want to so. know when Ben's on the podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I, Dude, I wanted Brian, that answer from all three you, of man. you, but, you know, hey, there you go. Yeah, what about you, Max? Uh, we talk a lot about you on this podcast, and usually you do not have a microphone where you can uh, where you can talk back. So how does it feel to have the power of the audio console now? Oh, it feels good. We'll see how it, <laughs> we'll see how it plays out. We'll see how long I'm behind this desk. Wait a minute. <laughs> Max can talk? I didn't know we were doing that. It's a great answer, Max. It feels good. <laughs> it's like trying to talk to a middle schooler. Hey, Max, you better watch your mouth. We'll, we'll take that microphone right away from you. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right. right. So, so let's, let's let's move on. <laughs> um, <laughs> this this article came out. Expect less and more of your pastor in addressing current events. Ooh. So we I get asked this question a lot. Hey, like why didn't we talk about this on Sunday morning? Yeah. Or like why did we choose to talk about this on Sunday morning? Um, and so this is a, this is, I found is a helpful article and they have five truths to bear in mind. And so, um, I'm, I haven't actually read through all these yet, so I'm excited to go through them with you guys and we can dialogue and see like, okay, do we agree with this or, you know, how do we feel about this? Uh, but the, the first opening paragraph, and we'll have a link to this article in the show notes, um, or in the YouTube comments, but it says this from pandemic response to racial justice, to politics, the last year has produced more than its fair share of public controversies, along with pressure for pastors to address them. If public figures, including Christian leaders in forums like TGC, are speaking about an issue, isn't it reasonable to expect your pastor to address it as well? And given that so many people, including Christians, are so wrong, it sure would be nice if he would clear everything up. Um, And so here are uh, five truths that... um, Actually, I'm going to read another paragraph before we get there. Uh, it, It says this. It says, Your pastor is hired by God as his representative, speaking God's words as a herald of the king and caring for Christ's flock as the under shepherd of the good shepherd. This calling is high to be sure, but it is also specific and limited. And that is something for which we can be thankful, even when it means he doesn't offer the perfect words on every major event. So, Ben, you kind of smirked at that uh, when I was talking there. This is a video podcast. You can't hide it in there. (laughs) Sorry, it wasn't about that. Oh, classic, dude. Were you texting You're somebody? Just Max. <laughs> Just Max? <laughs> he sent me the funniest little gif, so that's what I was laughing at. Sorry. All right. So well, I thought you were laughing at the fact that you thought content. you were hired by, hired by God. I thought that's what you were, were Maybe you could about. share this with the class, Max. Just kidding. <laughs> Please don't. Um, all right, five truths to bear in mind. Let's, let's check these out. Number one, your pastor has specific and limited authority. Discuss. Dude, let's go down through the five real quick, Ty, because he uses the same four, five, six words to begin every one of them. Number one, your pastor has specific and limited authority. Number two, your pastor has a specific and limited message. Number three, pastor has a specific and limited purpose. Fourth, specific and limited flock. And fifth is specific and limited capacity. So we're talking about the capacity, the flock, the purpose, the message, and the authority of the pastor here. Okay, so how do you, like, when you read through those five, like, what what instantly comes to mind, or, uh, you know, how does this, you know, frame your response to the person who's like, hey, why didn't you talk about this? 
on Sunday morning? Yeah, I think, well, you know, often probably they're asking that in regards to like the sermon, maybe like, why wasn't that a part of the sermon? If something is like a know, specific part of the text or something that happened in culture, something that happened in culture. Gotcha. Like, why didn't you talk about that in your sermon? Hopefully if they've been around our church for a while, they would know like, that's not how we preach. It's not topical. It's we're going through a text of scripture. We're going through a book of the Bible. And by all means, if I feel like the text lends itself to a certain application that has to do with something going on in culture, I'm going to go there. But I'm not going to force a current event into a text that we're preaching that week if it's not there, um, an application or something like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're never going to kind of hear that sort of thing. I mean, it's going to be very rare that we do like a just a topical sermon on a current event. That's just not kind of how we view preaching. But, um I mean, that kind of goes with his his second one of, like, we have a specific and limited message. Like, we're preaching the word, we're preaching the gospel, and obviously there's implications to that, but, yeah, we're not uh, we're not just getting up there and talking about the latest headline and, and our thoughts about it. Yeah, let's start at the top. Andrew, what do you think whenever you read that first, first bullet point there, your pastor has specific and limited authority? I mean, as I read what he's saying about that, it's like he's saying he's not a Christian TED Talk speaker, right? And, and I mean, Ben kind of hit that a little bit where it's like we're not necessarily there to uh, address every single topic on someone's mind. Obviously, the framework of our application of the text of Scripture might, might cross over into something that's some, somewhat current on people's minds and hearts in that way or how the text of Scripture and the authority in declaring that text informs a current issue we would certainly see that within the scope of our responsibility but but it's it's um he's talking about basically the the things here that the pastor is kind of almost um his jurisdiction it might might be the way to put that i don't think he uses that term but but he says the pastor has the right and the duty to implore you as a church member, basically to show up for public worship every week, to listen to him speak and to heed what he says. Um, this, this remarkable power comes from his authority to speak God's word to you. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I think it's like the scope of his, um, of his authority and responsibility. When he says a specific and limited authority, uh, I, again, it's a very short blog, so he's not really feeling that filling that out. But um, our authority extends in the pastoral office as far as basically the word, you know, the word that we're declaring extends, uh, and and so we have to we have to serve our people in that regard, uh, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. You know, Second uh, Timothy three, and so yeah, I, I think that that's um, that's accurate. Um, one that he could have included here is your pastor has a, he might, I don't think he even says this under capacity. He, I'm going to rewrite this blog in a minute, but <laughs> a specific and limited expertise, yeah. right? Like, like he has a specific expertise and frankly, being around a lot of pastors, you don't want to hear a lot of pastors takes on politics. Like, like, like that's an issue that I'm extremely interested in. But when I talk to other pastors, guys have a limited amount of time to, grow in expertise in certain areas. And that's one area that like everybody wants your take on right now, no matter who you are, pastor, whoever else, but especially someone who's in an authority rule. We're such a politicized culture. Everybody wants to know what's your latest take on this. And I think more pastors, I I think one, more pastors could grow in their knowledge and understanding of that area. But then two, uh, if you don't have a knowledge or understanding of that area, just man, really stay in your own lane, like really stay in your lane and don't, don't give, one way you can see in a highly politicized culture um, uh, creating issues within your church is by giving your very, very limited and maybe unstudied, in some cases, naive takes on the latest political thing. That that That's a great way to lose a lot of uh, respect from your people or, or, uh, or to divide your church if you're... Uh, you know, if you're given a, you, you, you've always got to give your take on something and it's like, you know, uh, and it's over politicized, right? I, I take it even a step further and say that if you're the pastor of a local church, um, that even if you are well studied, you should probably be careful what you say. Yeah. Because um, no matter where you land politically, there are people who will tune out your message, people even that are in your pews on Sunday morning that will tune out your message based on your politics, even if it's well studied. And so in my 
you know, thought there in my question to ask the pastor there is like, is that worth it? Yeah. Like uh, is I, making exactly. your political, you know, your political leanings known to your congregation um, worth a segment of your congregation tuning out whenever you are, you know, preaching that specific and limited message, number two, whenever you're preaching the gospel. Great segue. Um, and so, yeah, that's the second one. Uh, your pastor's specific and limited message, Ben, you kind of talked about that. Um, but, like, wait, isn't the pastor's job to, like, teach me how to live the Christian life? Like, what what is the message that we are to herald every Sunday morning as we gather together? He says it in here, the good news of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I think that, dude, because that's a, a, a message that is universally applicable, uh, all times and places, spaces, every country of the world, from 2,000 years ago to today, and all those different cultures, I think that the scope of that message should clarify for us, like, to, tr- again, we use this word a couple of podcasts ago, but to truncate that down into um, trying to appropriate it, uh, uh, and when I say appropriate it, like trying to... Um, trying to uh, 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 dilute it through uh, the latest political hot take, right? I just think it would be such a distraction from how the gospel can inform those areas uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if you're approaching it from, I got I to gotta start with this latest controversy that I got to address. So I'm going to like sit here and wait for the ways that I can squeeze that in to, to the context of this message or the liturgy I just think, like, give them the gospel, give them the truth of God's word, and um, and the Spirit can can and will use that in, in their lives, right? Yeah, we're preaching in a Christ-centered way, not a current event-centered way. So we're we're preaching the text in light of Christ and the gospel, not in light of everything that's going on currently in our culture. Now, again, like we've both said, applications, implications, if they fit the text, yeah. you know, we should go there, but... Um, yeah, the message is the gospel, and then we're to make disciples by teaching them to observe all that Christ commanded. So, um, you know, again, there will be there will be implications that lead into helping your people think through what's going on in their culture and their lives. But um, that's not the starting point. The starting point is the gospel, and then, and then we go to that. Something's coming to my mind that uh, I was in a class a few weeks back. Uh, Dr. Robert Smith was our professor, uh, just living legend in the in the expositional preaching world. I think he teaches down at Beeson Divinity School in the South, and um, uh, uh, great, great, great dude. And he's in his seventies, super wise. But he he had this phrase that he kept using in class, like "Don't socialize the gospel, but gospelize the social." Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and kind of that calling uh, to uh, to to his students, and um, it, it meaning that that the implications of the gospel, where the gospel will lead us, is if it's really internalized, it will affect the social fabric of our culture, of our very lives. Um, but we've got to focus on gospel. We've got to get the gospel known, internalized, uh, so that it can be lived out in those ways. And I think. Uh, you got to stay with the accuracy of the text you're preaching um, and also faithfulness to the gospel from that text. And so, yeah, we do. We have a specific and limited message and a specific and limited purpose is the next one. Yeah, well, with that, I was thinking about this idea, and, and I feel like when I see the the media that comes out of a lot of churches, whether it be statements they're making or uh, stuff like that, it feels like they far more view their org- like their organization as that, an organization, mm-hmm. than a people. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of times I get this image of like the White House briefing room. Yeah. And it's like how much time is spent or maybe even wasted by church leadership on this, uh, this uh, like what's coming out of the briefing room rather than, you know, what's coming from the pulpit, you know, or, yeah. you know, mixing those two. But, uh, yeah. Okay. So next one, uh, specific and limited purpose. Um, the art, the, uh, author here says that um, in addition to heralding God's word, a pastor also shepherds God's people. Your pastor is uniquely tasked with your spiritual care and dedicated to your progress and joy in the faith. If and when he speaks to a public controversy, it must be for this purpose. Um, he's not responsible for ensuring that all of his people have the right opinion um, on every disputed issue of the day. And that's almost that's that good. idea of the briefing room too. You know, it's like um, whenever we do address these things, it is to, you know, to either maybe lament something that's happened, uh, like a, a, a catastrophe, a tragedy, um, but it must be for the purpose of caring for the flock. Um, and the briefing room has no business in that regard. Like the briefing room yeah. is like more telling you what to think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
2020 was like the year of, because we were all locked in with COVID, the, like practically the whole year, it was the year of like all these public statements, you know, where it's like every single issue that comes up, such and such organization, such and such church denomination, such and such whatever, such and such person on social media is going to give like their latest, like, here's my statement on this, you know, and it's like, are we all so bored and out of our minds that we just have to continue to issue statements, you know? And we got, I got feedback uh, uh, from uh, mainly from, and almost exclusively from people who are not associated with our church who are like, where's your statement on such and such, you know? And I, I love this at the end of this, that, that part on purpose. He says, um, as a Christian, you should absolutely care about such issues and discuss them with your brothers and sisters, but your pastor isn't called to referee every mm-hmm. conversation. And that's a good thing for both him and for you. <laughs> and I, I just thinking of the fact that the church is a people and that I'm not going to issue like some statement based upon my own opinions and my own thing, you, you know, those kinds of things from my own or even from a couple of leaders when our church is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. And, and like they, they might think differently on that. And so pe- the people of Northwest Gospel Church, far be it for me to be like, this is our statement on this. I, I think I can say we are lamenting this. Here, here's our prayer of lament. But I don't know. It's like everybody's feeling like in this social media saturated world, you have to, like, if you don't posture uh, in this specific way for this specific purpose on this specific issue, then like, you know, well, we went over that on the podcast months ago. Your silence is complicit, right? And so I, I just think it's like there's a there's a purpose here. And and in the same way that every single, um, like we, we've talked about this in the area, it's just church discipline with our elders. Like the pastor isn't like your dad that you tell the other people, like I'm telling, you know, I'm tattletaling about the, it's like Matthew 18, 99% of church discipline issues work themselves out member to member. So like talk to each other, walk through these things. And, um, and I think the same thing can be, can be true here. Um, are you the type of church that, that the only people who can come and be members there are people who agree, uh, or, or primarily agree with the pastor's politics? Like if so, you're doing it wrong, I think big time. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I was actually, you know, just recently having a conversation with one of our members who's having some fam- familial conflict over politics and uh, in that in that conversation, I realized something, and I, I realized, and maybe this is something that I should have realized years ago, but I realized that the person who was more on the left was looking at the right and the ways that the right is ungodly, okay, like politically, yeah. And the person on the right was looking at the person on the left and you know magnifying all the ways that the people on the left are ungodly, and or that the policies on the left are ungodly, and like it just hit me in in talking with him, like neither the right nor the left politically is Christian, right? This is a secular government. And so it's easy for both sides to magnify what's sinful or wrong about the other side because there's things on both sides that are sinful and wrong um, in in the policies. And, um, you know, I don't know if we've talked about it on this podcast, but I've talked about it with a lot of people, like like just even who Jesus picked as disciples, right? Yeah, that's great. Um, they're, They're all over the political spectrum. You have... Um, the tax collector and the zealot, like the person who works for the government and the person who's trying to overthrow the government. Um, you know, I, I know of people in our church um, that, like, that have been at protests. That are trying to overthrow the government? No, what, no, what's no, happening no, here? No, no but that, I know people at our church that have been at protests um, from both sides of the aisle. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm, you know, I'm pumped about that. Like, I'm glad that there are people who can rally around the gospel who may not agree politically at all, Um, but that who, um, that who come together for the sake of the gospel, come together as a family and, um, you know, a pastor who just speaks to every controversy, like it's a briefing room and does this thing is going to, um, alienate. And, you know, like, like you said, um, is, uh, is going, if it'll look like a church that just believes the exact thing the pastor does politically. Just imagine you stand up there in the pulpit one day and like you decide to jump into the latest political thing and, and and kind of give your opinions on that. And there's like somebody's unbelieving friend or whatever, a family member happened to show up that day to be with them. And they are on the total opposite end of the spectrum on that specific issue. Like, and you say that in the first 10 minutes of your message, like, and, but then you get to the gospel 30 minutes in and you're really appealing to them. It's like, you just lost credibility there and you've lost a hearing and you've lost the plot. You've lost the purpose. And I think it's, 
it's uh yeah that's that's painful yeah there's a certain as you guys are talking there's a certain like we don't want to be so heavenly minded that we're of no earthly good right you've, boom you've heard nailed that. it but hezekiah 27 but we, two. but we do want to raise people up thinking not of the things of the world but thinking of christ above like we we kind of want to raise them up and give them perspective i guess would be the word for it to like kind of get their like blinders off to just the what's going on culturally in the moment and like hey let's look back on like redemptive history what god's doing what he's done in the past what he's promised to do in the future how should that help us interpret these things that are going on um and i think that's a message we should always be giving our people that's not about a specific issue but like is uh is is an important thing to like remember like what's been promised remember who god is that he's sovereign that he's good um that should prevent some of the most common responses we see to these things which is fear and fighting and those different things so yeah so number four uh this is one that i think you and i have been have talked about quite a bit your pastor has a limited and specific flock Mm -hmm. right um and we've you've talked about and maybe i don't know if it's been on this podcast or if it's just been in other conversations but you know being really uh you know engulfed in Twitter wars and then showing up on Sunday morning and realizing like the stuff that like that Twitter is fighting about, like your specific church has like no idea. <laughs> this is even a conversation. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know, how do you go about like this in regards to, you know, shepherding your people specifically? Yeah. I love what he says here that despite the impression given by social media and cable news, not every issue is global. Um, and I was, I've actually has spoken to our congregation at CW about this recently. Um, and I think I said, and it fit with the text of the sermon. It was kind of in the application portion. I said something to the effect of most likely none of us in this room are going to really be able to have like a huge impact on Washington, DC and what's going on there. But what you can impact is like what's going on in your home with your wife and your kids and the people who live in the houses next to you and your local church family and your local community and the people who have needs there, like you can have a real lasting kingdom impact. And so I think we're people when they're watching the news all the time and they're on social media all the time, these issues that are like kind of out there is the focus when it's like, it doesn't really affect their day to day life. And it, but it's distracting them from what actually is in their day to day life. And it's like, don't be so caught up on like the latest thing that the other side of the aisle did. Like, are you, if you're a husband, are you like going to go home and love your wife as Christ loved the church? Like, or are you so worked up by you were on a certain news app all day and it's just, you're so bent out of shape. So that I think kind of fits with like, as a pastor, I'm, like, let's worry about our church family and the unity that we're striving for and to make disciples and our mission. And like, let's not let these other things distract us from that. And um, yeah. All right. Last one here. Your pastor has a specific and limited capacity. Yeah. Unless, Andrew, you're, unless your pastor is Ben Paula. Yeah, right. Look at those muscles. Andrew Look brought that up earlier. And there was another article actually in September um, on TGC from Kevin DeYoung. And it's titled, It's Okay to Be a Pastor. And it really resonated with me with everything that was going on. He said, you didn't sign up for ministry to become an expert in epidemiology or Supreme Court <laughs> nominations. You aren't quite sure if masks are saving lives or the first step of government oppression. You don't know how to fix, you don't know how uh, to fix policing in America or if it needs fixing in the first place. You don't, uh, you're not looking to sign up for Black Lives Matter or Trump's reelection campaign. You don't have an opinion on everything or at least not an opinion you think needs to be shared with everyone. And he was basically like speaking to pastors, like it's okay to like not be an expert in everything, not be studied in everything and just kind of tell people like, you know, I'm, it is complex and I'm looking into it. And, um, because I feel this way about a lot of the things I got people I'm pastoring in my small little church who in regards to masks are totally opposite. And it's like, I'm not an expert, but I, here's what I'm, at least educated in is like pastoring a local church. And so like, we're going to pursue Ephesians for unity, regardless of how we feel about mass. Like that's what I'm like supposed to do and what I feel like I'm an expert in. But as far as like getting into the weeds about the science of masks, and it's like, 
I have my opinions, but like, I don't even think that's like, let's set that aside and pursue unity in the local church. And so anyway, that resonated with me because I, 2020 showed me, I do have a very limited capacity. Like I'm not, I don't know all the solutions to all these problems in our country. Um, I have opinions and I'm learning and growing, but so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's just me kind of sharing like, yeah, I, I hope people would see that, Hey, Ben is limited in his capacity with (laughs) some things. Yeah, so there's different people listening to this right now. There's church members uh, of different churches who may be on the side of like, oh, wow, I'm realizing like my church leadership spends an inordinate amount of time to like, you know, to to give us the briefing room, if you will. Um, um, and there may be church members who are listening to this thinking like, oh, so that's why my pastor or my church hasn't been like out front of all these social issues every time there's a new one uh, or, a, you know, a new a new cause to champion. There's pastors who are listening to this, right? Who are um, maybe relieved <laughs> in reading this and be like, okay, like I feel like I've been failing because I haven't been doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, there might be pastors in here who are convicted that they are, you know, you know, parroting whatever, you know, they hear on some, a specific Twitter account or a specific news channel or whatever. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just all the, all the different varieties of people, um, who, who listen to this and like their, their different takeaways from this is, is really kind of fascinating to me, you know? Yeah. Um, and it, it all has to do with expectations. So let's close this way as a pastor, Andrew, you're a lead pastor, Ben, you're a lead pastor. So this is a question for you guys. Like, what do you believe or hope that your people should expect from you? Just straight up in a sentence or two. Uh, I always say like, if you boil down my job description is to preach the word and to care for people's souls. I mean, so preach the word and shepherd them. I mean, that's what I feel like. And again, like that's super general. Like we could talk about those things forever, but I'm committed to preaching the word, preaching the gospel and doing my best to shepherd people and care for them and their families. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with those two. I'd probably add to it thinking of like the the fact that we're local church elders. So like read through um, 1 Timothy 3 and see the way that that guy uh, is... um, the way his marriage is, the way he parents, the way um, the character that he has to insiders and outsiders that's visible to the world around him, but then also um, that is uh, noteworthy and worthy of, of following that example within the church. So um, as far as a job description, yeah, preaching the word, shepherding people, um, leading with integrity within the church, the church family, um, and then as it relates to my specific role, whether it's casting vision or doing those things, just being faithful in that. But then also that, um, I mean, cause our job description is also personal, right? With our families, with our kids, with our wives, with our, um, the, the way we live in our neighborhoods. So like, you can expect that, like expect that out of your pastors and you should, you should expect and, and require that out of all your pastors and elders, uh, pastor elders, um, and so, uh, I did one final thing on this that I thought was hilarious is the third paragraph that we did, that we missed, uh, as a minister who pastors college students during the week and sits in a pew on Sundays, I want to encourage my fellow pew sitters to think carefully about how they see their pastors address current events. I thought that was funny. Cause this is like, this guy's a campus pastor at like a reformed, uh, university fellowship guy at Northwestern university and how he's working with college students day to day. And so then he thinks of this blog, uh, expect less from your pastor on current events. And you just think of that constituency of college students, right. And of like uh, the, the idealism and the, the desire that, that, you know, maybe the pastor would speak to this and you can, you can kind of read between the lines of, uh, of this guy's ministry. And then, and then how he's sort of addressing the people he's called the shepherd, right. He has a specific authority message, flock purpose and capacity. And he's utilizing that to remind them um, those college students are like, Hey, like chill out and, and like, and like keep, keep the main thing, the main thing. Right. Yeah. Ben kind of teased it, but next week's episode is going to be Ben's uh, position on masks. And that's uh, what we're going to talk about <laughs> next week. Why do you um, want to kill people, Ben? Why but it, uh, <laughs> but if, if you want to, well, you're your, assuming my position. Oh yeah. yeah. Did you just assume his position. <laughs> uh, if you want to add your voice to the conversation, if you have a question or maybe you have an article that you'd like us to, to talk through, uh, hit us up podcast at to be the church.com is the way to do that. You can also do it on social media at to be the church. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, feel free to leave a comment there. And if you're listening to us on your uh, podcast app, check us out visually next time on podcast or on YouTube. So uh, have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time.